Uh, I'd like to introduce JP Villanueva. He's, uh, he currently works as a trust and security engineer with Bug Crowd. Before that, he was an application security engineer before that. He's a solution architect over a White Hat security. He's been a regular speaker um, all over the place. So at Black Hat Arsenal, at DEF CON, as well as a bunch of just local OWASP chapters. Uh, he's a great speaker. Um, I, please help me in welcoming JP Villanueva. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Perfect. Cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Hunt, data-driven web hacking and manual testing. So um, what this talk is about is uh, I actually built a tool within Burp to help you know, application, web application pen testers or vuln assessors do their work uh, manually in a much more efficient way. Um, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But start things off, I just wanted to give a couple of contributions. Um, I wouldn't be speaking up here if it weren't for um, these people, the Motley crew at Bug Crowd. Um, in particular, my, my boss, Jason Haddix, who originally came up with the idea for this tool and this talk. Um, Ryan Black and Fatih Egbatan, uh, who helped do the testing as well as uh, write some of the code as well. And um, the SEC engineering and SEC ops teams at, at uh, Bug Crowd as well for you know, taking a look at the tool and doing some testing. Uh, I wanted to give shout outs to all the bug hunters, pen testers, and you know, code analysis people out there. As um, you know, if you contributed to doing any submissions on Bug Crowd, a lot of that data did make it into this tool. Um, and Burp Suite fans, you know, everyone's a fan of Burp Suite. Uh, the, you, everyone uses it for their you know, web application assessments. And the GitHub contributors. So uh, the last time I talked about Hunt uh, at DEF CON and Black Hat, um, you know, it's been pretty popular. I've gotten a couple of pull requests, so shout outs to the uh, GitHub contributors as well. So let's talk about the current problems we're facing in, you know, the web application space when it comes to manual testing. So, um, you know, kind of the first thing is that you'll notice with a lot of web applications these days is that there are increasingly large and complicated web applications that um, need manual testing. So what am I talking about? If you like go on websites like Amazon or you know any any of those big e-commerce websites, you'll know that they're huge. They have you know a lot of dynamic content, whether it's JavaScript, HTML5, stuff like that. There's going to be a lot of dynamic parameters, hundreds and hundreds of parameters. And as a manual tester, how do you kind of tackle that? Right? Um, it's going to be hard to just do manual testing with the sheer amount of you know, injectable entry points that are on, on these applications. Um, next thing is you know, application assessment training lacks tribal knowledge of vulnerability location. Uh, what do I mean by this? So if you are a brand new web application pen tester, generally you know, due to experience, you're not going to know where to look. And it's kind of hard to. Um, know where to look uh, if you don't have the experience um, and you need to kind of build up that experience to, to know where to look, right? So it's kind of a, a chicken and egg problem, but um, you know, that's, that's something that's severely hindering a lot of the testers today. Um, and the third is that there's really no in-tool workflow for web hacking methodologies. So um, you know, a lot of the tools that we're working with today, we're going to have to use, you know, several tools just to, you know, do our testing and then do our reporting. Why can't, why can't we have both, right? So what are the current solutions, what are the current solutions for, um, you know, for those problems today? Um, number one, you know, hackers who can eyeball and effectively find security bugs. Uh, I don't need to tell you guys that there is a severe shortage in, you know, um, finding a good pen tester. Um, I'm preaching the crowd here. So, you know, really, they may or may not have uh, a methodology. You know, it could be some kind of YOLO swag god, and you just go at a go at an application and find vulnerabilities and not use a methodology. But um, you know, it's important to use a methodology when you're doing your testing. Um, definitely has accrued tribal knowledge. Again, it, that's that just comes with experience and. You know, it kind of puts all the new pen testers at a at a disadvantage because they just don't have that experience. 
or someone who bug hunts or does uh, consultant work already. And again, it just goes back to that, um, you know, that problem of, you know, we have a shortage in the industry. Um, another current solution that we have is using a dynamic scanner. So if you're not using a dynamic scanner, you probably should. Um, but a lot of a lot of companies and a lot of um, testers do use dynamic scanners. But you know there are some cases where you know it doesn't really help with manual testing. Uh, there's limited test cases in terms of uh, fuzzing the parameters. They're usually you know already set. Uh, the the injections or payloads are already set. It's cost prohibitive. Um, you know if you're using you know a good dynamic scanner, you're probably paying thousands of dollars for it. Uh, there's limited detection cases as well, at least in terms of, you know, kind of dynamic pages or error pages. It'll tell you that the error there's an error page, but it won't give you context as to what that error page means. You know, that's something for a manual pester, ten, pen tester to actually look at to know what, what, the, what, what just happened there on that error. Um, and again, complex sites are hard in terms of authentication. A lot of scanners have um, difficulty with uh, kind of logging into uh, web applications these days. I mean, it's it's they're pretty good now, but um, they're not one they're not 100%. So a manual a manual tester should still go through the web application manually. And that's where Hunt comes in. So we kind of took all of those problems and we kind of wrote a tool to to solve them. So um, what does Hunt actually do? Uh, it gathers all the tribal knowledge. Um, into passive alerts that will tell you, hey, you should take, probably take a look at this certain area of the web application based on the parameter, um, because I know it to be uh, vulnerable from uh, what I've seen from the data set. Um, and we also, I also put in a methodology within Burp itself. So um, if you're a pen tester and you're going through a methodology, you can actually do all of that within Burp. Burp doesn't have that out of the box. So that's something that I wanted to build in there because you know context switching is, is kind of hard when it comes to um, doing your reporting. You have to copy and paste everywhere. And it gets really messy really fast. Um, and I, we also put in manual testing references within Burp as well. So again, that tribal knowledge, um, it's going to help out new pen testers say that they're, you know, SQL injection, you found SQL injection, but you don't really know how to exploit it. We put in, you know, links to um, different references that you can go to to help you out in, um, you know, doing your, your pen testing, whether it's, you know, SQL injection or um, something else like uh, server-side request forgery. So this talk is pretty much split into two different parts, and it's, uh, there's two different parts of the tool. Uh, the first is going to be the scanner portion. And you know, here's a little comic from XKCD. It's, it's like, well, we have all this data. We should write some algorithms around it. But you, know, you find out that it's, it's a lot harder than that. So let's take a look at you know, the tribal knowledge piece, you know, the bug location. Where, where do those bugs actually come from? So, uh, we actually took uh, data from BugCrowd uh, from over 600 bug bounty programs, and that equates to about two web targets per program on average. Um, so a target would be, you know, the different uh, subdomains within the domain, or you know, different domains that are in scope for that particular uh, program or company, right? Um, and within that, there's about 15 parameters per target on average that we found to be uh, vulnerable on those, on those bounties. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, so we took 600 times 2 times 15, and we saw about 18,000 parameters. And that's the data set that we're working from to see where all of the bug locations are based on parameters. So let's talk about vulnerability locations. So we took those um, 18,000 18, parameters, we reduce them down to just the parameters with the actual vulnerabilities on them. We reduced it down even further to just critical and high severity bugs. So these are the bugs that are really, you know, SQL injection, remote code execution, stuff like that, that are really, really critical to uh, find. And, you know, again, this, these aren't the things that dynamic scanners can find. This is something that, you know, a real uh, live pen tester or web application vulnerable tester will find. So, uh, and we wanted to make it easy. Uh, 
we also sorted it down by recurring instances. So, you know, parameter names generally came up very, very frequently that we saw. Uh, and, you know, things like uh, ID, if, if you're a seasoned pen tester, you'll know that that's probably going to be interacting with the database and probably um, you can do SQL injection there. So we saw a lot of that in our, in our data set. We also reviewed the top 100 uh, parameters for possible permutations manually with and or with regex. What, I mean, what we mean by that is uh, sometimes we saw that parameter names had, uh, so let, let's take the example of ID again. You know, sometimes it would be at the beginning of the parameter name, sometimes it would be at the end of the parameter name, sometimes it would be somewhere in the middle. So we saw a lot of that occurring as well. And then we also added manual ancillary data. Uh, stuff from what we've seen from doing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of to pen tests, you know, we've taken from uh, lists like FuzzDB and SecList. If you guys uh, haven't heard of those, definitely check those out. Um, and they're cool projects. Uh, let's, so let's go back and uh, kind of talk about, you know, the um, composition of what a uh, URL looks like. So. Um, just, just very simply, you know, it, 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 it's composed of a protocol, a subdomain, a domain, which is the domain name itself, plus the uh, top level domain, and then there might be a file or resource uh, there at the end of the URL, but the juicy piece there in red is going to be the parameter and the parameter value. That's what we took um, from our data set, and that's going to be important uh, for, this, for, the, for this tool. So if, again, if you're you know, a seasoned pen tester or even, you know, you've seen quite a bit of um, stuff like, you know, ID, you, you already know what to do. So this is literally me when I see ID equals, I just, you know, sprinkle all those single ticks just to see if I can pop a SQL injection in there. Uh, let's actually take a look at the GUI for the um, scanner itself. So you'll notice you'll notice that there's a scanner window. It's called Hunt Scanner. And uh, you'll see all the different pieces there. On the left side, uh, there's the actual vulnerability classes uh, and then all of the different parameters from our data set. And you, if you actually click into one of the parameters themselves, uh, it'll open up that table and you can see all of the um, parameters. And then um, down here, you can drill down to the request and response for uh, each of the things that were found by the scanner itself. And then, uh, as we were saying before, with the uh, tribal knowledge, you can see that there's an advisory. So, um, so if there's a SQL injection on ID, uh, it'll tell you that here's the location where I found the uh, potential vulnerability. Uh, Hunt located it. Maybe it's something that you might want to look at. Again, this is not an automated thing. Um, this is it'll help out in the efficiency of manual pen testers so that they can be you know, much faster at being able to find those critical vulnerabilities. And then you see there at the bottom, uh, it'll have all of the uh, links to um, the different resources. I myself like using Pentest Monkey uh, when I have to do uh, a SQL injection. So I, I generally look at that when I'm you know, looking at, you know, say, if it's a MySQL or a Postgres or stuff like that. So now let's talk about the bug location by bug and vulnerability class. So uh, what do I mean by this? Um, we have the data set here, and it's broken down by the vulnerability class and then the different uh, parameters. So SQL injection, again, you'll notice that uh, a lot of what we saw in our data set uh, was that you know, a lot of the parameters um, were ID, select, query, update. So really grammar that was um, you know, indicative of um, kind of talking to a database. And you know, when you look at this, when you look at this uh, slide, it's like, well, duh, of course I'm going to inject on those. But it, it's, it's hard for a new pen tester to be act actually be able to know that off the bat without having you know, all of that knowledge ahead of time. And that's what we're trying to solve here. Uh, next vulnerability class, uh, file includes. So this includes both remote and uh, local file includes, as well as directory indexing. A lot of it, a lot of the um, parameters 
uh, had to do with kind of both vulnerability classes. Uh, you'll see there, you know, file, location, locale, path. Again, it's very simple stuff. Um, and, you know, these are the parameters that a lot of our bug hunters actually did find, um, you know, really juicy vulnerabilities and did get paid out a lot of money on. So, uh, and we're offering all that data here. So, you know, it's, it's again, it, you know, it's kind of, it looks obvious, but at the same time, you know, until you get all the data, data together, it's just like, oh, wow, of course. Why didn't I see that before? Uh, next thing here is server-side request forgery. So you'll notice uh, some of the fire emojis here. And this is actually because um, this is the most critical bug on the platform that has increased uh, in the last couple of you know, months and uh, quarters, even years. Um, and you know, definitely look for, for this bug if you're, you're out there doing your um, vuln assessments or pen tests. So you know, a lot of the parameters, um, you'll see it, they actually mimic kind of um, uh, redirect, uh, open redirect vulnerabilities, things like destination, dest for destination, redirect, URI, path. So uh, when you see those kinds of open redirect um, parameters, you should try doing server-side request forgery on those. Uh, next thing is the uh, OS command injection, um, remote code execution. Obviously, this is very critical and a lot of the uh, parameters that we saw were like daemon, uh, upload, directory, execute, so stuff like that. Um, usually indicative of um, OS command injection or uh, remote code execution on those. Insecure direct object reference. Um, so things like ID. So ID comes up actually pretty frequently. Uh, from our data set. However, uh, they're on you know, multiple vulnerability classes and, and within the tool itself, it'll separate it by vulnerability class and by ID. So uh, if you find, if the scanner finds that you're going through uh, a web application that has the parameter ID, it'll put it in all those different places so that you can go and check for all the different vulnerabilities associated with that parameter name. Um, and again, you know, ID, user, account, um, stuff that you can actually do and change uh, in terms of, you know, uh, horizontal um, privilege level e escalation, getting to other people's accounts or email, stuff like that. Here's an interesting one, server-side template injection. Relatively uh, new vulnerability class compared to the classics like, you know, SQL injection. Uh, if you see the uh, parameter name template, content ID again, preview, uh, these are usually going to come up with server-side template injection, some kind of template templating engine on the back end, um, you know, whether it's uh, PHP, Python, stuff like that. It'll, it'll end up um, using these parameter names. And just for funsies, we threw in some debug and logic parameters. Uh, and I see these quite often on a lot of the uh, web applications that I've done testing on it over the years. Uh, and currently, so you'll see, you know, access, admin, debug, uh, edit, and it's funny because um, usually these parameters are going to present themselves as, you know, access equals false. What if I make it true? So sometimes you, you know, you kind of don't um, think of that right away. Or again, if you're a new pen tester, you wouldn't know to set a parameter name from false to true just to see kind of what happens and. Uh, that's what we took from all of the actual debug and logic parameters, um, and it could uh, yield some pretty good authentication or authorization bypasses uh, within web applications. So what does the Hunt Scanner implementation look like in terms of the code? So, um, you know, I used um, a lot of the Burp API and uh, actually write, wrote this in uh, Python or, or Jython, and you can see here I use a couple of APIs um, f that Burp exposes, Burp Extender, uh, Extension Listener, Scanner Check, iTab, and iText Editor. But uh, really, this is where all the action happens. We're doing a passive scan on all of the uh, content that uh, that the that Burp is going through in terms of you know what's going through the proxy when you're doing your your testing. So. Um, it's not an active scan, it's, it's, a, it's a passive scan, and actually we don't show all of the um, info within the uh, passive scanner window because we didn't want to kind of dirty up your current workflow of Burp. Uh, it would just you know, end up with a lot of um, 
kind of content on the uh, passive scanner is going to be hard to parse. So we actually made another window for um, this tool so that it'll, it'll be easier to actually look at uh, from a pen test perspective so in case you use the passive scanner a lot. Uh, so let's do a live demo. So I am tempting the demo gods right now. This is definitely going to work. I totally don't do live demos for a living. All right. So here's the scanner window. Uh, let's say you know I'm testing on you know OWASP uh, appsecusa.org, um, and let's say you know very contrived example. Let's say I found you know a parameter name called uh, ID, and again that's that's a parameter that's usually vulnerable to things like SQL injection and other vulnerabilities. So um, let's load that up. And obviously, when you're doing a real pen test, it's not going to be like this. It'll just pick, the, the scanner will just pick it up uh, passively as you're crawling through your web application. But uh, you can see here, it, it, it showed up in the window. Uh, you know, maybe you should check SQL injection. Uh, maybe you should check uh, server-side template injection insecure direct object reference. They all have the parameter ID. But let's look at SQL injection, for example, here. Uh, you'll see that once you actually uh, click this uh, menu, it'll show up here. Uh, and it'll tell you what the host, the parameter ID, because it could be that it, the parameter name is ID, or it's some kind of like ID underscore user, user underscore ID, stuff like that. Um, it'll, it'll show up there, so you'll know which parameter you're actually uh, looking to test, and then the path that we found it on. Again, here's that advisory window. You can see the uh, request and response uh, from Burp itself. Uh, someone had actually um, written this uh, as a pull request and is still working on it, but um, you're going to be able to actually load and save results that you found here on the uh, scanner window. So if you need to you know, go do something else or you know, you're done for work with the day and you want to kind of uh, shut everything down, you can load all of this back up and get started uh, again you know, the next day when you're doing your testing. Um, but to help out in kind of the workflow of knowing what uh, you've tested, uh, you can actually do this here. Um, it's supposed to be a, a checkbox, but you know, sometimes Java Swing doesn't want to play nicely. Uh, but if you uh, click this on and off, you'll notice on the side, um, you know, it, it means that you've actually checked that parameter. There might be, you know, more parameters that you need to be testing. But this is to keep track of what you've actually tested and what you haven't tested. So, um, you know, so you're not doubling up on all the work. And there's a lot of deduplication on the on the tool on the back end. So if it think the the tool thinks that oh I've already seen this uh, parameter before, then it's not going to include it in this window. So there's there's deduplication happening as well. So it's not it's not showing up, you know. ID a hundred times on here, and then you have to, you know, click it every time and say, "Yeah, I've already checked it." So um, that was the uh, scanner window itself. So let's talk about the methodology window. So again, we wanted to build out uh, kind of a methodology within Burp that testers can use so that they can keep track of their work, as well as you know, be able to give this at, a, at the end of the report. Because the, um, the test isn't over until you hand in that report. And it's important to get that report right, because you know, someone's going to hunt you down if, if that report doesn't look good or you, know, you don't have the right things on it. Um, let's take a step back and talk about kind of the methodologies that we all use. As, as pen testers and as uh, vulnerability assessors. So, um, you know, since we're here at AppSec USA, obviously a lot of us probably use the OWASP testing guide. Uh, some of us use the uh, Web Application Hacker's Handbook, a definite classic. Uh, if you go through it, um, I forget which uh, chapter it is, but it tells you kind of a methodology that you should uh, kind of look at when you're doing your web application pen test. And we actually included that um, as one of the methodologies within the um, tool itself. Or you might be compelled by some kind of um, body like you know, HIPAA or PCI to do your methodologies. And you know, if you're, if you're um, you know, doing with any, dealing with any kind of healthcare data or dealing with any kind of um, 
payment card data, you know you have to go through these methodologies in order to get that passed. So, um, and really, why, why do we do this as, as pen testers? It's to prove the work, right? It's like when you're, you're in your, your math class when you're a kid, you know, you have long division and all you have is the number on there and the teacher's like, where's the work? You can't get credit for this if you don't have the work. It's the same thing for you know, a pen test. If you don't have the report at the end and you, you, know, you say you found all these vulnerabilities, really you've proven nothing, right? And you need to be able to actually have that report to um, send off to whoever is actually looking for it. And we wanted to make it easy for the pen tester to be able to do that um, with these methodologies been built into the tool that they're already actually doing their work in. Uh, so what does this look like uh, within Burp? So uh, here on the proxy window, you can actually do a right click and then it'll, it, you'll see um, kind of an entry there that says send to hunt methodology. And depending on how the methodology looks like, you can send it to various places uh, within that methodology. This one is built on um, the different functionalities of a uh, web application. So you know, maybe I'll send this one to the account uh, and I, I think it, it's SQL injection or I've already tested it and I know it to be vul vulnerable to SQL injection. So I wanna send that request and response pair uh, to the hunt methodology section for SQL injection. And that description. So again, that tribal knowledge. So when you're doing your testing, uh, and you know you're new to this. You know you're gonna say, mm, "What should I? What should I do for here?" Um, and you know, sometimes you need to check all the parameters that present themselves as you know insert, delete, or update statements in terms of SQL injection for you know some kind of ac account functionality. Again, we want to make it easy for new pen testers to get started, hit the floor running much faster than they would if you know they would have to start from scratch. I know, I know when I first started. Uh, it, was, it was pretty difficult for me, um, you know, going through the web application uh, hacker's handbook and really having nowhere to start. So hopefully this will be helpful to all the new pen testers. Uh, the, there's uh, support for multiple requests and responses here. So you can see uh, in this bugs tab, you can have multiple requests and responses based on um, what you found on, during your testing. And I kind of just want to point out, you see that little, X right there to close that tab. Just as a side note, that took me so long to do. Java Swing is driving me insane. Um, that was probably harder to do than putting all of this together. <laughs> um, and you know, there's also resources. So uh, what do I do once I've actually found a SQL injection or I think I found a SQL injection? I'm gonna go to Pentest Monkey, or I'm gonna go to you know, my favorite resource, or if there's a blog post that I just saw on you know, our NetSec or something, and it has to do with you know, a vulnerability that I'm looking at, I'm gonna stick it here into the, the resources tab. And what kind of pen tester doesn't take good notes, right? So we also put a note-taking kind of application on here, so you can keep notes in terms of the vulnerabilities that you found, so that you know, maybe you wanna do testing later, uh, if it's SQL, if I can't get it to pop, I'll use SQL map. Or, you know, if I'm a real noob, which I am, I'll go ask Jason Haddix for help because he's super good at, you know, being a pen tester and doing all that. I'll go to him and be like, hey, bro, can you, like, help me out? I'm like, I, don't, I have no idea what I'm doing. And to kind of, you know, you, you could put a lot of entries in here, like the notes and the resources, um, but you might ask yourself, you know, how do you keep track of that? Uh, you can actually save and load uh, JSON files. So um, kind of the configuration files are written in, in JSON, so it's very easy to actually edit yourself, and that's uh, kind of a lot of what we wanted to accomplish here. Not only did we want to make it easy and efficient for pen testers, we also wanted to make it uh, extensible for you guys so that you know if you have your own kind of testing methodologies or you wanted to add your own stuff, we wanted to make it easy for you guys to actually be able to do that and, um, and I'll go through that in just a moment here. Um, but it looks like, let's see here. This is what the methodology implementation looks like. We used uh, the APIs, you know, uh, extension state listener, uh, context menu factory to make that um, right click and the iTab to actually make the window. But it, it all comes down to this, you know, create menu items and 
on the back end. So it's going to actually make that uh, right, right click context menu so that you can send all of those requests and response pairs to the tool itself. And I dare tempt fate again with another live demo. So let's go for two for two here. So here's the methodology window. Um, the default one that uh, we wrote into Hunt uh, breaks it down by functionality and by um, the functionality of a, you know, any kind of web application. Uh, you know, the account, account registration, things you would typically find on any kind of web application you're doing your pen test on. Um, we kind of wrote that kind of methodology there. So let's say that, again, um, going back to that uh, ID parameter, let's say I, you know, I send this to repeater and, you know, I, I throw a tick and, you know, I was able to get a SQL injection. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually uh, right click here, send to hunt methodology. Let's say I found it on the account functionality. I'll send it here. It goes into SQL injection. So within hunt itself, I'll go into account, SQL injection, and it'll end up here on, on bugs. And, um, you know, this is going to keep track of all of your work. So if you've already popped that SQL injection, you'll have the request and response, and it'll be very easy to prove that, yes, you did find that SQL injection there. And here's the proof because, you know, I have the request and response uh, bodies uh, that I used in my testing. So, and that'll go all into your report instead of having to, you know, go back and forth, do context switching, you know, copy and paste here, switch to a new window. You know, that, that gets very tiring very quickly. Um, and that'll all end up in the JSON file. So if you, you know, want to write kind of whatever reporting tool that you're using, if you want to script it out, have it go into the reporting tool, boom, it'll make your reporting so much easier. Um, and then you can see here, you know, you can put in resources. Uh, you can actually preload them within the uh, JSON file itself. Uh, and then, you know, any kind of note taking you want to you wanna do um, because, you know, maybe you can't get uh, the vulnerability to pop, maybe you want to look at it later, maybe you want to send it to a senior uh, pen tester to take a look at, or someone who's uh, much more experienced than you uh, about you know, any kind of vulnerability. You can just pass them the uh, JSON file, they can load it within their own instance of burp, and then boom, they'll have your instance of what you were working on. So it makes it very, very easy and very, very fast. Um, it's hard to detect it on its own. Again, this is a manual, a manual process, not so much kind of automated. So as a manual tester, you know what you're testing and what you found. Uh, maybe a scanner can't, can't do that. So it's, it's, that's, that kind of thing is very hard to automate. But there is a passive scanner running inside Hunt, right? Yes, but it's not always vulnerable. So you don't want to clutter up uh, all of your work on things that might not be a vulnerability. So let's talk about the uh, plugin installation itself. So again, this is a burp extension. So it's very, very easy to actually get up and running. Uh, like I said before, I wrote this in Python because I'm crazy and I took a lot of Java Swing stuff and kind of translated it in Python and I, I'm never doing that again. Um, but here's the installation. Uh, you would go and download the uh, standalone uh, Jython jar file, and you'll load it up here in, in, in Burp, go to extender and then options, and then within Python environment, you set that as your, as your jar so that uh, Burp knows where exactly to look, and it's gonna use that, um, that jar to uh, you know, build this um, and run this um, plugin. So the actual plugin installation itself, um, you would go here in the extensions, uh, you would click add on the burp extensions and then you would um, click uh, Python for the ex extension type because it's uh, .py and then you would select it within the uh, file selector and then uh, load it into, into burp and you're off and running. But um, before, before you do any kind of testing, uh, it's also important to set your target scope. So if you're doing any kind of pen test, you're gonna know that uh, you have to stay within scope. If you don't, you're kind of breaking the rules, right? Um, and 
you would do this by going into the target scope area, the target window, and you go in scope. And I actually didn't know this until recently, uh, that you could just put a string in here with just you know the name. Uh, I was used to actually putting hosts on there, but I found out that you can uh, put this in here, and that's pretty awesome. So anything with the name, you know, AppSec USA within the, the host name itself, uh, you can, you can uh, it'll pick up uh, based on the target. Uh, setting, and then you would set the passive scanner scope. Again, the passive scanner is very, very noisy. And we didn't want to clutter it up, so make sure to use the sweet scope here so it'll only pick up what you're supposed to be looking for and not all of the you know, random Google requests that might happen or you know, third-party requests that might happen on a website. Um, and then a lot of people uh, don't know this, but I use this a lot for my bug hunting, and this is great for actually finding um, a lot of host names through Burp. Uh, just click, you know, spider selected items, and you would be surprised at how many uh, things that you could find just by spidering all of the um, hosts that you're supposed to be actually doing your pen tests on, and you can uncover a lot more host names to do testing. Uh, and then once you've actually done that a couple times, uh, run the passive scanner if it hasn't run already. Um, you just want to double check it and do all that. Run the passive scanner, and then um, it'll all the results will end up in the uh, hunt scanner window. Uh, so let's talk about extensibility again. Again, we wanted to give you guys the building blocks to be able to um, do your testing uh, the way you want to do it, not just the way we do it. So what does that mean? This, in terms of the scanner extensibility, it all comes down to that, that JSON file. So um, you know, this is kind of what a, an issue looks like from the JSON file. And uh, let's say that you wanted to just add another parameter on OS command injection, you might be like, you know, JP, you're a moron. You don't know what you're talking about. This vulnerable parameter here is actually vulnerable, and you didn't include that in your data set. That's fine. You can add that into your, your own JSON file, and then you will find that whenever you're doing your testing. So we want to make that, again, very, very easy to do. On the methodology side of the extensibility, uh, all you need to do is add new functionality here. Just, um, you know, as long as you follow the actual schema, the tool will build it out in those um, menus that you saw earlier, those tables, and everything will be fine. Uh, if it doesn't, then the schema, the schema is obviously wrong. Um, and it's very easy to find out whether you did it right or not. And let's go for three for three on the, on the live demos. So, um, and this one is for you know, kind of how the workflow would be if you wanted to add something dynamically um, to the uh, parameters. So let's say that, you know, I already, already added it here, but let's say that you have, you know, uh, let's change this to OWASP 2017. And I added it on insecure direct object reference here. So let me reload the uh, scanner itself. And this will reload the uh, JSON file. Uh, into your scanner, so it will pick it up. So let's look at it in the scanner window and secure direct object reference. Boom, right there, OWASP uh, 2017. Let's say we found it on the actual website, 2017, as a parameter. Obviously, it's not a vulnerable parameter, but you might have a vulnerable parameter that's not uh, within the hunt data set, and you can just add that very easily. Let's say it found it for example's sake. Boom, right there. Shows the parameter name, where it found it. Then I'll have the request response, and then you can send it to you know, repeater, intruder, so you can do more work on it. But it did find it. And let's say that you know, it wasn't vulnerable, so I'll check that, and it, it closes it off. So there's zero to check for this parameter. You can move on with your work and check all the other stuff. Uh, now let's look at the extensibility of the actual methodology. Um, and let's add another. Um, kind of vulnerability class here for on our tests for authentication. Let's call it, let's call it a swag bypass. That's going to be a new OWASP top 10 um, vulnerability class right there, swag bypass. Let's say it made it into OWASP top 10 this year. Uh, let's reload the actual um, hunt methodology. Oops.
goes here. Look at the functionality. What was it? It was, uh, where did I put that? Authentication. Boom, right there. And then, you know, you can get on with your work. Uh, so let's talk about the future of, uh, you know, kind of hunt. Um, we want to put more built-in uh, methodologies, uh, definitely stuff like OWASP, PCI, HIPAA, CREST, P-TEST, stuff like that. Um, if you want to contribute to the, to the project, you know, just make a JSON file with all of the uh, testing me methodologies, and then it'll be available for, for the rest of the community. So that would be great if um, a lot of people can do that. Um, maybe port these features to Zap, you know, I love, I love OWASP, so if you use Zap and you want to you get all of this stuff in Zap, maybe you want to port it in Zap. Um, we, wanna, we also want to add more scanner checks as well as vulnerability classes. Right now we just put in all of the, you know, the critical stuff, but maybe you want to get into the other uh, vulnerability classes if you haven't seen it here already. We want to add those as well uh, as, as time goes on. Add more resources, obviously. Um, people are finding new attacks or new ways to bypass things, so we want to add good resources for um, new pen testers to, to read so that you know, they, get, they get all of that experience right away uh, without having to you know, spend years and years and years pen testing hundreds and hundreds of applications just to get the same kind of um, experience. Uh, dynamic JSON uh, structure, structure support. Uh, right now it's very, um, the, the JSON structure is very tight, so if you don't uh, follow the structure properly, it's not gonna build the tool. We want to make this be able to be uh, much more dynamic so that um, you know, it, it works into your guys' workflow much more easier. Maybe you might not go by functionality. You want to go uh, down deeper levels, and currently we, it only supports you know, a couple of levels down on the, on the table. We want to make it more dynamic. Um, maybe a more perfect GUI, but you know, it's Java Swing. You can only, you can only do so much, right? Um, REST support, uh, that's currently not built in. We're, we're only looking at, at parameters, so um, a lot of apps these days are, are, um, are, are using REST, so we wanna be able to test uh, for, for things that we see on the uh, URL for, for REST uh, instead of just the parameters, resource file name analysis instead of just parameters, uh, alerts on content types, XML, JSON, because maybe, because uh, you know, vulnerabilities like XXE, uh, if you'll know, you'll know it's there if the uh, content type is, uh, you know, JSON or XML, you might be able to, you know, change the uh, content type. So a lot of it, uh, we want to alert on that to make sure that, you know, testers are looking at that. And uh, probably most importantly that I see a lot of new testers kind of ignore is uh, response analysis alerts. What do I mean by that? The error pages that you get on, based on the injections that you do. Um, Sometimes you know you might get like some kind of error page that's not a 404. That just means that you need to deep, uh, dig deeper. Uh, don't stop there. Keep going. That error is there because the application doesn't want to let you get to something. So you want to dig in deeper. Um, so for a lot of you new pen testers, definitely look into the errors that you're seeing when you're doing your testing.